I'll be sharing 12 life lessons that I wish I knew as a teenager. Now some of these things I did do, some of them I learnt a bit late, and some of them I didn't know at all. I'm going to be sharing them with you so at least you know them ahead of time. Guys, the first lesson on my list is to enjoy the journey. Guys, life sucks sometimes. Even as a teenager, you're trying to figure out who you are, you're trying to decide what you want to do with your life, whether you should go to college, there's a bunch of stuff going on at that time. And I want you to try and be in the moment and enjoy what's going on, or at least appreciate what's going on. Because you're going to look back at that time with fondness when you establish and you chat with your friends on your beachfront property. It's funny how, as humans, sometimes we look at, should I say, tragic or hard times in the past with fondness. When I speak to my friends who were in military school with me, we all acknowledge that that was a terrible time, it was a terrible place. But at the same time, we laugh about it and we acknowledge the lessons that we learned from that experience and we just laugh at it. So try and embrace and appreciate the moment or the struggles that you're going through right now because in the future you're going to laugh about it. Now while you're on this journey, I want you to learn how to be a gentleman. Guys, I've seen disgusting behavior from men towards women and it's no wonder why women don't respect them because they don't respect themselves. I've heard from people online that you're a simp if you pick up a girl or woman for a date or you drop her off or you pay for the bill. That's retarded. Like there's nothing wrong with that. That's just being a decent human being. Now, that does not mean let her step over your boundaries. Of course, you need to have your boundaries and you need to have respect for yourself in order for her to respect you. But picking her up or dropping her off at her parents' house is a responsible thing to do. If you have a woman or a girl with you on a date, you're teenagers, if you have a girl with you on a date, you're essentially responsible for her safety. So dropping her off and making sure she's safe is the right thing to do. It doesn't make you a simp or an idiot. For those of you who ask girls to pay for the bill or split the bill, if you can't afford to pay for a date, maybe it's a dinner or I don't know what you want to do, don't take her out. Like, if you can't pay, then don't invite anyone out. It's as simple as that. Now, again, I'm not saying be an idiot or be a pushover. You need to have your standards or have your boundaries, but at the same time, you need to be responsible. Now, as a teenager, you're trying to figure out what you want to do with your life and all that stuff, but at the same time, you're still going to have fun, or at least you want to. So you need to get comfortable with knowing how to speak to girls. A lot of guys have approach anxiety, but the only way to get rid of that is by speaking to as many women as possible. It's as simple as saying, hi, how's your day going? Or hi, do you know the direction of the cafeteria? Or hi, I like your shoes. It's as simple as doing that. The worst thing that could happen is a girl saying no. If you see a girl that you like, approach her and say hi. Even if you have no intention of taking her out or exchanging Instagrams. Doing that more frequently is gonna get rid of that anxiety because you're just gonna see women as normal people. You don't want to end up like these men who grow up and become successful but they're creepy around women. Now obviously don't let women consume you. They shouldn't be like the focus of what you're doing because that's gonna be a lot of time wasted on your end. But also get comfortable with this. Now this bleeds into the point of just building social skills in general. A lot of kids these days spend most of their time on social media playing video games so they're socially inept. They can't have a simple conversation or act like normal human beings outside. They act really strange. You don't want to be like this. Learn to have conversations with people. When you go to a restaurant or you go to your corner store, have a conversation with the cashier. Get to know their names. These skills make people like you and it makes you a more sociable person so you can handle yourself in different situations outside. The next lesson is to focus on self-improvement. If you look around your environment, you're going to see a bunch of people who are addicted to video games and social media. Now this gives them instant dopamine hits. So their dopamine levels are at 10x all the time and this has a negative effect on their physical and mental health in the long term. Because at this point, they don't even get any enjoyment from regular tasks like going to the gym or studying or working hard at something. When you're going through life, you start off at level zero, just like a video game. But as you grow through self-improvement, you tend to improve yourself in certain aspects of life. So your communication improves, your fitness improves, your appearance improves, your charisma improves. And these things help you get far than other people who don't work on self-improvement, who are addicted to their screens. Now, no one is perfect. Everyone always has something to improve on and work on. So don't sit on your phone. Instead, learn how to become a better person. The next lesson is to build high income skills. So things like content creation, photography, videography, copywriting, sales skills, all these things are gonna stick with you for a very, very long time. Unlike all these trends that people craze about, the crypto pump and dumps, the NFT pump and dumps, 
Focus on all these tangible skills that you can hold on to because they're going to pay dividends in the long term. The next lesson is to build your body through exercise. Now, the beautiful thing about having a fit body is that no one can give it to you and no one can take it away from you. When you go to the gym for months and years, building your body, going through pain, it gives you this base of confidence that can't be replicated or faked. And there's this subconscious sense of respect that people who are fit just get because people acknowledge subconsciously that, oh, well, he or she put work in to get this kind of body. You just naturally respect these people. Now, when you have this base of confidence, you tend to not tolerate BS from people. And even besides that, it makes you more attractive to the opposite sex and it makes you perform better than other people who don't exercise and you live longer, so that's a bonus. Now, while you're going through high school and college, I want you to take more pictures. I want you to become a documentarian of your life. Now, this might seem a bit inconvenient initially, but your future self is gonna thank you because looking back, it's going to make your life look more eventful. It's going to slow down time for you. Something else that I do is I write stories of the most eventful events in my day almost every day. This slows down time for you. I bet if I ask you what you had for lunch yesterday, you probably won't remember. But taking notes of your days and taking pictures especially makes your life look more eventful. Now I got this idea from Matthew Dixon in his book Storyworthy. But this is very interesting because most people look back on their lives and their lives don't seem that interesting. But when you take pictures, you write stories about your days, it makes your life very, very interesting. The next lesson is to keep your word. If you say you're gonna attend something, attend it. If you say you're gonna do something, finish it. This builds trust and respect between you and everyone that you come in contact with. Because a lot of people talk too much, they talk a lot of stuff and they don't ever do anything. What they don't know is that this makes people subconsciously respect them a bit less because they don't fulfill their promises. The next lesson is to learn how to say no. No to that relationship that you should have never been in. No to doing things that go against your values. Now when you say yes to things that you really don't want to do, you tend to resent the people that you're helping or you tend to resent yourself even for saying yes. So learn how to say no. If you have certain values that have been put in you by your parents or your religion or just your own philosophy and you have people presenting things to you that go against those values, really ask yourself if you really want to compromise that. If you respect yourself, you won't compromise your values. So learn how to say no. Now, when you do say yes to things that you actually want to do, make sure you dress well. Make sure you look presentable. If you're a teenager and you're probably broke, that doesn't mean you're insane. So learn how to dress. Stick to the basics for now. If you can't afford to buy nicer things, you don't need to necessarily get designers but get the basics and tailor them to fit your body properly. You're gonna look way better than people who wear designer galore but don't know how to fit things properly. The way you dress is the way you'll be addressed, so make sure you dress accordingly. The next lesson is to show gratitude to your parents. Now guys, I know that sometimes as a teenager, you might not get along with your parents that much, but I want you to try and foster a relationship with them because they're not gonna be here forever. And one thing about life is, for the most part, when you grow up and you maybe leave your parents' house, you tend to look back and appreciate your parents because now you're living the life that they lived. You kind of understand the struggles that they're going through and where the headspace was at. So try and foster a good relationship with them because they're human beings as well. They have emotions, they're not robots, and they're not gonna be with you forever. Some people don't even have the luxury of having parents. And since you do, make sure you cherish that and you foster those relationships. Now, the next lesson on my list is to build a relationship with God. Now, if you're not religious, this might be the creator of the universe for you, but having a relationship and knowing that there's someone that's greater than you, that's watching over you, it keeps you grounded and humble. It creates these boundaries that you're not willing to cross if you respect yourself and you respect God. It keeps you safe from all the retardation and decay that's going on in society today because society is crazy today. A bunch of potholes that society sets for you to fall into these hedonistic cycles because hedonism has no end. So knowing that there's someone that you fear who's above you, who's watching you, keeps you away from all the decay and all the destruction that's going on around. All right guys, we come to the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this and you found this helpful, make sure you share with someone who would like it. Make sure you leave a like down below, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.